actually, I've, I've always loved the omnibus format. Yeah. So if you look at movies like 12 Stories or Be With Me, I'm actually, you know, tackling a couple of stories. I think the challenging thing for In The Room really was um, the design of, of a room. They were giving me their feedback, which I felt was, was very important, you know. And then with each individual segment, I also had translators. You know, because I, I, I don't know what the hell they're saying, right? I'm just looking out for the expressions. And it's like, you know, actually, the beautiful thing is, you know, um, being inside the sound stage, yeah. I was having this beautiful air conditioned comfort. I didn't sweat anything. And I always get attacked by mosquitoes. They like my B plus blood, right? But here, no mosquitoes, and it was really great. I mean, but when you actually sing inside the sound stage, it's pure silence, and you can create day, night. And uh, Arthur created these rooms where the walls could be detached. So, you know, in a lot of ways, um, you could actually just in five minutes remove a wall and have a different vantage point for camera. So it was fun uh, that, that I could run around, but actually what I missed uh, after the shoot was not cabin fever, but more like I felt out of time. Because as I was going into these stories, I was being in a certain time, a certain decade, you know. Um, and, and the room would bring that to life and the costumes by Meredith, you know. It was, uh, like I, I went through a time journey I time traveled in 10 days. Well, you know, I, I, I watched a lot of Korean drama, so there was this series I liked a lot called Rooftop Prince. Oh, okay. And there was this character that was a bit of a sissy, so I wanted to use him. And then, you know, I go to these fantastic film festivals, right, because I love horror. Yeah. And I met this girl, Kobe, who's very feisty and cool, right? So I thought it'd be nice to have her with this guy, you know, and put them together. Um, which show, I actually have a, a Japanese friend yeah. who deals with artist management, and uh, he found me show Nishino because uh, she can act as well, you know, she does theatre and um, it was, and then uh, Nansan suggested uh, Josie and, and I'm a big fan of this movie called Dream Home, okay. you know, which uh, she produced, it's really yeah. violent and, <laughs> and then she's got that great sort of rose feel to her, uh, inspired by Rose Chef. Yeah. Well, um, I actually, we, we had to use some of our interns to, <laughs> to, to do the, the scenes, right, so yeah. um, I would film it and I would ask them to do this, do that, right? But it's sort of like wearing a bikini, yeah. right? And and then I I look at the thing and like, okay, I think that sort of works. And when when they came, <laughs> it was like, okay, sure, Lawrence, uh, this is what you got to do, and you got to be naked, right? So <laughs> it was also inspired by this seven-story hotel, you know, um, which was over at uh, Rocho. Seven-story hotel was the most famous hotel back in the the fifties. It was like the landmark, the tallest building. So it started off as a grand hotel, but when it was demolished in 2008, it was a sleazy, okay? But in the old days, you know, there was like a, a, a bar on, the, on the, the top floor and a lot of um, Asian performers would go there to sing and hopefully catch Mr. Rich and then marry him. So, I don't know how true this is, but in my investigations, um, Run Run Shaw used to go to, and actually it was not seven, sorry, it was the eighth story, okay, up there. And he fell in love with this singer, Mona Fong, right? And because he fell in love with her, in 1957, he, he went to Hong Kong with her, and he left Singapore to die with no more films being produced, right? Because they were the pioneers. They came in the 20s for the exhibition business. By the 40s, they were producing films, P. Romney films. Actually, I don't, I don't really care. I mean, I think the most important thing is get the audience in, yeah. you know. I mean, I was really happy, like, with the, with the Busan screening. It was really packed and, you know, they were getting really turned on. So, so. <laughs> like, the first one, um, Boon Pin and Daniel Jenkins, we shot that in half a day. That was really fast. Um, I would say that one of the more complex ones would be Pussy. Singing on it. This, the, the, you know, this is your first musical. Right? Yeah, my musical. I got dancing and all that funny, funny stuff. Yeah, so that was a little bit more challenging. Yeah. Uh, do you draw on any influences, uh, musical? Uh, more so the old movies, though. Mm -hmm. yeah. no, 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 the Cathay classic. Correct. Yeah. I thought that'd be kind of nice. And you know, we wanted, we really wanted to achieve different look and feel. So, like for Pussy, I was trying to achieve the Technicolor look. So the film actually spent a lot of time in post, you know, to try to grade it. Because the problem is when you shoot digital, it's too clean. Then you gotta pump in the grain. But then when you pump in the grain, the closer shots are clear, the wider shots are blur. Uh, yeah, but anyways, I, I think it, it worked at the end. It was, I'd say 80% close to how I envisioned it. For the 60s, it was my references of like Midnight Cowboy. You know, it's a little bit more muddy, you know. Um, yeah.